Okay, I don't know if the sound is going to be recorded here, um, but I'm not making these anymore for your sake. I'm making them for my sake. I'm going to apply the two-hour block uh, high-performance stuff that I saw on some YouTube videos. So I'm going to stay super hyper laser focused first thing in the day um, to build this LinkedIn API connection. And first thing I did was check my security stuff. So I was like trying to get rid of buttons on my home screen. This says Discord would like to receive keystrokes from any application. So if I deny it, I might throw off everything that I was trying to do on Discord. But to me, like this is an alarm. It's like what? Like you're saying that you're going to have a key logger every time that I use Discord, which maybe is not a big deal but how do I know that because I have discord like not completely wiped from my memory that I'm giving access to somebody for a keylogger what that means in cybersecurity is every time I type something even if they can pick up on the sounds of the clicks or like which keys I'm using because of the consistency like I'm telling you this stuff is super sophisticated for hackers um then I might be allowing somebody to lift um some data from me like my bank accounts or as I start to interact with more people online, their data. So F that, if I mess up everything that I'm doing on Discord to be able to generate images, I'm all right with that because there's other places that I can generate images also for free that don't give me this hyper like fear, you know, like, like why would I be giving somebody permission to receive keystrokes? That's like a very insidious way of asking, like, can I have a keylogger on your shit? No, thank you. So I'm going to deny that. And then Descript also wants to have access to all of my stuff. Descript is a, is a program that takes all of your audio and turns it into text. Um, yeah, there's also stuff that I can use um, that I don't have to give access to my system for. So if you didn't know this, so, so my thesis is, was was um, overseen by the head of the cybersecurity department at CU Boulder. Like, I'm so grateful for that team. And um, my thesis advisor happened to be one of the nation's leading um, cybersecurity experts for like the government. And so a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is because he really instilled in me through all the classes and through the interactions. Um, and not because he would highlight it, just because I was aware, okay, this, this advisor is focused on cybersecurity, so I'm going to like pay real attention to it so that he knows that I've got that base covered. Anyway, um, so the biggest heist ever done with computing was at a casino, I mean, up to the date when I was in school, so which was not that long ago, less than, less than a decade ago, like five, seven, I don't, I remember, I remember, like seven years ago or something, or six, I, less than a decade ago, <laughs> um, somebody didn't turn off some some access through like a fish tank or like a, a like a like yeah some kind of fish tank and through there the hackers were able to creep into this like casino's security system and take all their money so all i'm trying to say is like people act like i'm making things up or like i'm watching too much tv i don't really watch tv if i do it's usually the predator movies over and over again because they're interesting um but i am just saying like like, do I want you to take all of my audio when I know that I talk to myself? No. Do I want you to take all of my audio when I've signed non-disclosure agreements with other companies? Um, or even if I had a, an employer, even especially if I had a specific employer, knowing that that means that I'm letting you listen to whatever stuff? No. And I haven't touched the script in a long time, and it's still, like, asking me for access. So it's not like I... Only when I turn on Descript am I giving access. Like, I think these are some of the low code, no code stuff that people like don't, that aren't software engineers, but are really good at making a lot of money with like stuff that works for everyone. I think this is the stuff that should be mandatory that they are really good at explaining to people. I don't know if even they understand. And I don't know how to break it down for people. Like, I had to go <laughs> through a lot of like different like, boom, like software boom camps and like, schools and like different degrees and i'm not saying that it's that i'm better because i did i'm saying like i don't know how to condense thousands of hours learning something into something that someone who isn't that in the weeds with it like i'm not the right person to like take what's in my head and spit it out to like the mass public you know like that's that is not what i'm signing up for i do my best when i have a job but i also expect people to like step up a little bit and like 
try, try to connect their own gaps or be real specific about what they don't know. But I, I am telling you that because I taught kindergarten for so long, I know that I can tell that in these guys or women or you know non-binaries, whatever they are, um, that are presenting us with like their lucrative low code, no code stuff. Yes, that is absolutely acceptable for certain things, but there are some things behind the scenes there that like I am we're really weary of as somebody who's been freelancing as a web developer for like 11 years. And I started that journey like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And I'm now more deep in the weeds with AI and post quantum computing and all that stuff. So um, I'm just I'm just doing I'm making these videos and I'm trying to be like as transparent metacognitively speaking um, as to what my thoughts are because when I go into interviews people ask me really stupid questions in my opinion that like require not just a simple answer you know like like I don't just I'm not just going to memorize rote stuff and then spit it back out to you to like appease your ego and your and fulfill like your check marks like I'm building stuff for people that matter and um especially when I work with small local businesses, like I'm not going to set up people without giving them all of the information just so that I can make sure that I make a bankroll during this AI boom. And I think that when people say that it's just another bubble that's going to pop, I think that they're so misguided and clearly didn't have the same type of, I hate to say education, but I don't know where else I would have learned any of this. Like if I hadn't made myself go to school when I also wish I was out making money and partying and stuff like that. But when cars were invented, would anybody be dumb enough to say, oh, the car boom has popped? No, <laughs> they wouldn't. If the car boom didn't pop, or else we would all be back on horses and buggies right now, then why are people saying that the AI bubble is gonna pop when it's been almost vetted, it's been proven? I agree with it. I can find a billion people online that are also more sophisticated in their software knowledge that would agree that it is akin to or equivalent to when cars were invented. Like shit has changed. It's done. It's changed. Like stop saying that there's going to be a bust in the bubble. There's not There's going to be a lot of shitty software, just like there's a lot of shitty living cars out there, you know, that like need to go through more regulations and more checking and stuff. Sure, that's going to happen. So maybe people are trying to like, like, you know, like make a bankroll that way, um, perfectly fair because they, because like, it's not their fault if people don't vet their products. I'm just saying like, there's no such thing as that the A bubble is going to pop. It's not the same way as, it's not the same as the um, dot com bubble, right? Like, unless we have different understandings of what bubble means, then yeah, like then it will pop if you understand bubble to mean like a way to like, take money from people while they're too dumb to know what's going on. And so that's why I am not on board with like low code, no code, because I, I do think that <laughs> first of all, the developers in it are not like people that have as much life experience with the con with the thing on their conscience of like, am I doing the right thing for the most amount of people? Or am I doing the right thing for me right now while I'm kind of helping others, but I don't know enough to like, be given this much authority. I, I don't know, like, I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking about that because it's not my place to like go around judging, right? I'm just telling you, like, I would not, I'm not gonna give access to Descript or anybody. Um, okay, so then I fixed this thing over here. I'm gonna, yeah, my favorites are over here. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna stay hyper-focused because see, this is where I start to go down rabbit holes. So if you notice, like I did spend like five minutes feeling better about my thoughts, but now it's back to building this API that's gonna help me connect my um, rent BNB dot app um, to the LinkedIn API because I don't want to get a DDoS attack when I am um, launching this. And it's going to be just for a few people. I don't need to make it anything fancy. This is my like like little proof of concept. And excuse me, I downloaded the right, um, what I feel are the right uh, chat GPT for um, things. And like I said, I'm not making this video for you. I'm making it for me, but I don't mind sharing what I'm doing while I'm getting this done. That's that's all I'm doing here. So I'm going to make sure that you guys can see this. I don't know if you can see what I'm typing into my book, into my um, window. I don't know why I can't like just pick up the edge. Oh, there we go. Oh, OK, I guess the like the arrows go away when I use the um, quick time recorder. All right. So now I'm going to type in um, I am building an app and I want people to check in using the LinkedIn 
API. I do have authorization on my LinkedIn account for this. Can you please write code for me that will let me um, connect through the LinkedIn API? Okay, so I'm gonna ask for this, but I also already have like a web page. Let me see if I can, oh yeah. See, I already have this bidding platform. Um, already have the bidding platform pretty much like done. So, and I just realized, I don't know if I'm recording the right screen. I don't know which of these two screens you guys are seeing. Um, okay, I'm gonna just cancel this, whatever that is. Okay, I can't, okay, so. Oh, I think that I'm, <laughs> I'm so dumb. Okay, this is just showing you what I'm doing. Okay, okay, my bad, sorry. Like I just started using QuickTime, so that's why I'm a little bit slow with that. But anyway, um, here's a bidding platform. See, like I already have like the, the basics of it. So I'm gonna pretend like my dog Nishi wants to outbid me by like 500, by $1. So she's gonna submit her bid. Oh, and my, Oh, it's because I closed my firewall. So all I'm doing right now is like showing you that it is me. Oh, see, so, cause I was trying to authenticate through the AWS portal cause it's part of like how to use LinkedIn. So none of this works, so don't worry about it. Um, So all, all I'm trying to do is show you that like when you interview me, I don't know how to explain to you that this is what I do. And then I recently had a job where the guy was like, I feel like he was insisting that I wasn't doing my own work. And he was like, well, how do you, how are you getting this done so fast, I think? And I was like, dude, like, do you need me, do you need me to talk out loud like I would a, like a kindergartner so that you understand I'm using AI? So I am doing this for my own, like cleansing of my own energies with like that kind of frustration where I, it's my job to explain to somebody as if I'm their teacher. Hell no, like I'm not gonna, cause I have things to do. So staying focused on the things I have to do. I forgot that this was done, but you saw the webpage, like it's working, it's picking up stuff. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn this into more like functional code because I don't wanna worry about AWS before I, to me the biggest part is connecting to the LinkedIn API. Like the AWS, I can figure out through Bodo and all that like in a while after I do this part. So this part to me is more important um, right now because it's the only part I haven't had to do yet is connect through the LinkedIn API. So so I'm gonna ask ChatGPT this, and yes, I could use the voice thing, but for me, it helps me think about my thoughts if I type them out, but yeah, I definitely could activate the voice thing. And it talks too slowly, but if I speed up the voice, it doesn't like give me enough clear, ooh, it doesn't let me reach the, see, like this is where it's like, dude, like really, plugin API bot is, is unreachable. Okay, well then, don't use the plugin API. I'm gonna give it the LinkedIn API URL. So let's see if it sucks again. So if it sucks again, I'm gonna regenerate. I'm gonna stop generating. Yeah, see like this is, so I'm gonna remove that plugin, the plugin API bot because that's stupid. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go and start a new chat and where are my APIs? I'm gonna remove, I think it's this one. What is it, plugin API bot? Is it that one? I'm pretty sure it's that one. I know this one isn't gonna work um, because I didn't set all of it up. And it might've been the same thing with this plugin API.bot, but I don't really need it because I'm a software developer. So I don't need to rely on someone else's um, stuff working because I know how to get around it. I'd rather not, but well, you didn't work. So bye. Okay, so I'm gonna use that one. And what else would I need? DocMaker. Maybe Doc Maker, because maybe it'll make my HTML a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to, um, I should have copied and pasted the prompt. Okay, so I am, I'm gonna copy and paste it, paste it now so I don't have to do that again. I am, okay, so I always prime it. Pretend you are the world's best app developer and the fastest and most simple yet reliable solutions. Okay, so I primed my prompt um, because if I don't tell it it's the best, it's, I don't know why this, maybe it makes me feel better. Like, hey, I'm learning from the best, right? Okay, um, adopt, so I might tell it like adopt the, adopt the, who is it that like just made something and just put it up there? So I don't know if like uh, Stripe or, 
his name or paypal or facebook like i don't know like what their model was like like if they were just like just put it out there but most people say that so i'm gonna like not add that right now pretend you're the world's best app developer and the fastest and will simply get reliable solutions architect you are creating functional code and need to prove that you are able to connect through the LinkedIn API to verify identity. You already have credentials for, for um, credentials for your LinkedIn app. You already have the necessary permissions, which is true from LinkedIn. Please use simple code that is full stack, as much Python as possible. The front end can be made with HTML or anything that is the least um, involved. So I'm going to stick to HTML, HTML because yes, I can code in React and Node, but I don't need to. Like I don't need to. If this is a fast API and I'm basically just using like uh, HTML, I don't give a shit because my because my use case is not live data pushing. It's and and the users are not going to be allowed to see each other's bids for whatever my purposes are. Like I have the right. It's my land, and like I have the right to do that because I'm not saying I'm doing one thing or the other until someone comes up with a law to stop me. Um, I'm just like I told my neighbors when I opened my Airbnb, like this is my house, like this is my homestead. I own this, like I can put up as, I can host up to three per, three people in my house according to the law here locally um, and not have to pay uh, extra taxes as a hotel. So I'm gonna say the same thing here, like I have the right to do this. Okay, so like if you find laws otherwise, um, ask your lawyer and then have your lawyer find me and ask, and ask me so that I can find a lawyer for me because I do have lawyer friends, but eventually I'll probably need some kind of law backup. Anyway, that's why I'm proceeding this way. Um, that is the least involved. Um, only a few users will actually want to pay the fees to use this and that is handled elsewhere so for our so for your use case you want to have a html that is checking authentic what is it authenticity of user using the linkedin yeah can you please generate code for this? I will give you the link to the LinkedIn API for checking authentication. If you need more, if you need more information, please ask me. Okay, and I'm I'm not as worried about typos because it's um able to recognize and I'm dyslexic so fuck it if you need more information please feel free to ask me and I will help us find it okay so do I have to ask it so nicely no but I like to because it keeps me keeps me real you know so I'm gonna look at my notes and then I'm gonna go to my quick notes and I am going to um, let's see, where do I have? Oh, I don't have one for rent BNB. Okay, I'm gonna make a new folder. And so like people will ask me like, aren't you worried someone will steal your ideas? They can steal my ideas all day, but this land is mine. Like their platform, like Airbnb works because people use it, but this platform I'm building for myself, um, for my houses. And if it works for me, maybe someone will want in somehow or another, and that's fine. They can do whatever they want. Um, but this is what I mean by I don't outsource to someone who I can just have build a website for me because like I own the keys to my websites and as a former web developer, I mean, I still web develop, but like as a web developer, like I can hijack somebody's full stream of data. I can stop their sites. So just like some people are complaining about Airbnb, like pushes you offline if someone claims you had bed bugs, even if you don't, like that's because they gave their power away to Airbnb who controls like the digital real estate 
that decides who gets to see your stuff. So I am not going to be a victim to anybody because I have the FU skills in technology to like bypass that. But I don't think most people, even if I try to explain to them, I don't think most people like understand what that means. So I, I'm just saying it out loud. I put it on a few um, like YouTube videos where I see people like trying to sell that kind of stuff. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not saying some people won't benefit from it or that it's a great way to make a ton of money right now. Like, absolutely, go for it. But what I'm saying is, for me, this is about finding more ha homes for dogs and cats. And um, I need to make sure that if I'm going to put some effort into something that's for my own empire, that I, can I control the digital real estate as much as I do, like, the actual physical real estate where the people reside. Because then um, all of my power is... On, is mine, right? Like I control all of the assets that contribute to that platform. Um, and I have like a handful of houses and land and stuff that matter to me. Um, so I'm not building this for everybody. I'm building it so that I can find like a good little like deal that I, uh, it's called um, rent BNB, rent bid and barter. So I wanna barter with people that wanna move to El Paso for a few years or whatever. Um, that don't want to pay as much as they would in other places with good weather and access to better health care in Mexico. It's a fact. I have a YouTube video on that. Um, and at the same time, I, I'm not going to sell my land ever, like, because I don't want to, because I like owning land. And some women buy shoes. I buy fucking land and real estate. <laughs> um, it's mine. <laughs> it's just like women won't, like, sell their stuff. Nobody will sell mine either. And in my, uh, and I don't, I don't, on paper, I have no next of kin. So, like, there's no legacy I'm trying to leave behind. I don't have kids. I just want to make sure that it always goes for the animals. So um, whatever I have to do <laughs> on my deathbed, um, you know, it's taken care of. But um, the, uh, the, it's called Rent BNB. So I'm going to try to keep my, all my stuff straight. Okay, so I'm going to make it called Rent BNB. And then I'm going to make it a little bit higher right now so I can see it. And then here are my prompts, right? Um, for Airbnb, for it's not called Airbnb. For it's it's actually like for me transitioning out of Airbnb completely. Though I still will fucking abuse that fucking system as much as I can because they do make money off of me and I'm making money off of them. But it's on me to like make sure that all of that is fair, right? And there and I have a YouTube video on it. Go figure. So here's my prompts. So I don't have to retype it. Um, and then now I'm going to find the LinkedIn API and when I use LinkedIn, do I check in through this one? I don't check in through that one. So let me find the API for LinkedIn here. Yeah, it's over here. So then um, LinkedIn API documentation authentication. Um, okay, so let's see this one. I believe it's this one. Three-legged OAuth, how do I get approved? How to get signing with LinkedIn in to work? Okay, here we go. So here is how to get signing. Okay, so yeah, I can spend all day like reading all this shit. Sure, I can do that, but I also can just ask ChatGPT, and I already did like half of that the other day anyway, right? Like the stuff that has the pictures. So here's um, his version, and go to... So this looks, so I have that, and then uh, changes to, uh, as we continue to play the first, first at LinkedIn members will experience a newly improved interface to authenticate their LinkedIn credentials. Okay, so here's this, and then I'll add one more. Okay, so then here are some, here are, some top ranking search results for using the LinkedIn API. Please make the code easily functional, easily reusable by making Tiny pieces of functional code and using global bar names that I can swap out easily. 
Okay, so then here's that one. Okay, so what I'm doing now is, I don't know if I'm giving it too much instructions. I don't think so, because then I end up just having to redo everything like a step at a time anyway. But giving it like the bigger picture of what I'm doing is easier. Although I don't want to mix in S3 because then, then it'll go berserk. Okay, so I actually, I actually am going to remove this because I think I am going to confuse it if I do that, just like I would a human. So I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to like see what it does. And then after it does it, I'm going to like go back in and throw in like mm, the rest of it, right? So this video isn't to show you how to make what I'm making. This video is to show you how I think through what I'm doing so that I can make something. Um, and then the other one, I saw one more at the end over here. Mm version one look for version two api okay so so there's two more links i'm gonna have so here's this um and i'm gonna link this i don't know if this actually oh look the transcript okay so i'm gonna actually click on the transcript i don't know if that changes their header but if it doesn't maybe it does if it doesn't they can like we'll see if ChatGPT 4.0 can do it. And then there was one more that said to look at the version two documentation. So JavaScript mobile authentication. I'm pretty sure that we're gonna be using the authentication one. So, and then can I have, I have no idea like what they mean by version two. Uh, So I don't know what, okay, so I see it now. So then this is the, this is the auth2 request. So see, I'm like giving it as much info as I can so that it's not like asking me a bunch of redundant questions. And then here's the auth2, ooh, it doesn't have it. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, it doesn't have it. So then, yes, me, she, that's my dog crying. Okay, so here is my app. Okay, so, so they're gonna have me create their app through here. That's all good. So I'm not gonna make my entire thing based off of LinkedIn at all. So all I'm doing is I'm creating like a, what would you call it? Like a, a little window inside of my bigger HTML. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I still control the digital real estate. So my checking in through LinkedIn is gonna be like a component that I can choose to just remove and it doesn't affect the rest of my code. Where I've worked with a lot of like startups um, or even through interviews, like most of them integrate all of their stuff with one place that handles a lot of it. So I'm not gonna build an app around LinkedIn. I'm gonna exploit LinkedIn, LinkedIn's API, because I think it's easier to verify identities that way um, than it is to even do my own background checks. So when I was house hacking like 10 or, I don't know, I guess it was like 17 years ago now, I guess, yeah. Um, I had background checks on everybody and this one guy came in and he passed the background check um, and that background check worked fine for, for everyone except this guy. And th that was the last time that I house hacked for like a decade, well actually till now. Um, and I made sure that he passed the background check. I did, I believe I called his references. Um, and so the guy moves in. Within two days, he went to Fort Bliss and shot his army wife and then he shot himself. And we only discovered it, me and the other um, guests at the time, my other house hackers was because we happened all to be standing in front of the TV. And I rarely like interact with my with my guests, but at the house, like it was set up a little bit differently. Um, and so we were all like in front of the TV and the news came on and they were like, at Fort Bliss, a white, a guy in a white van, like killed his wife and tried to kill himself, but he's not dead yet. And we were like, what? And we hadn't seen the guy. And then, and then is when the other guys who were in the army. So th this is why this was not at all strange to us um, is because he, because everyone was in the army and I'm a Navy veteran. So it was nothing new that people would have weapons and ammunition. So apparently this guy had been bragging to the other guests um, that he had a bunch of ammo in his room and he showed them the ammo and he did a bunch of stuff that anybody in the army would think is not weird. 
So it turned out that the guy had actually just been released from fucking prison for hate crimes. And my, my, my guest was a white guy who had a best friend that was a black guy. And I'm a Mexican, so I guess like we were feeding into this guy's rage without even knowing it. Though he never said anything, but he was clearly like pretty clever, I guess. But he, um, he went. He so he had all this ammunition. He had left some of it in his van. We only knew he had a white van. We hadn't seen him in a couple days, so maybe he had been at my house a week. I don't. I really don't remember. But so it turns out we were all like, oh my god, could it have been him? So then the the I call them roommates, you know. But the, because they, they were my guests, but they're my roommates, I guess. Um, so then they went to Fort Bliss because they had creds to get on. And I, I do too as a veteran, but like I didn't want to deal with it because I was like, whoa, that's weird. So they came back and they're like, it was him. So then, you know, like the background checks do not work. They just did not work then. I don't think they work now. I think that there's ways to like obfuscate shit on your record. But LinkedIn right now is at least for the purposes of what this particular use case is for. Okay, like I'm not saying it's the answer to everybody's everything. Um, Facebook might be another way to go about it, but I also think it's pretty easy to fake somebody's identity and to also not get like, like true information. Um, because if I started link a Facebook account today, just to prove that I am who I am, I'm not going to have the, the history and I'm going to have to like track down friends and ask them to like say stuff on my page, but I also could be making fake friends. Right? So like to me, it's a lot easier right now, today, as of October 23rd, 2023. I'm going to use LinkedIn to prove that whomever it is is saying is them is them. And I am going to use the um, authentication that they have set up for what I'm doing because I want to prevent DDoS attacks. I don't want someone to create a thousand fake LinkedIn profiles and then pretend that they're like outbidding themselves and then like smear my whole effort out of like basically like smear it and just make, make, make it pointless. Um, but I am gonna put this behind a beehive paywall, right? So like, I'm not gonna make this available to everyone. Only someone that has any interest in this is gonna see this. I've already done the due diligence and researching like which cities I'm gonna target specifically California and New York. And then I'm going to leverage LinkedIn and Facebook to like market to those two places LinkedIn, because that's where a lot of these tech professionals that I know are starting to get, be like, just like me, like, fuck you, I'm not going to an office, I'm going to work from home, I'm wherever I want to work, and if and you're going to pay me the same, because it's my choice to live in a shitty city, El Paso is not shitty, but it's not, it's definitely not, <laughs> like, doesn't have as much to do as other cities, it's definitely a family town, um, but I'm going to go live in this city where there's, where I know that I'm, like, missing out, I, I have FOMO for some things, but I'm getting to save my money and, like, live in a pretty wholesome place, um, there's not a lot of, like, the same shadiness that I see, especially for females, like in this city as I do in other cities. Yeah, it exists everywhere, but it's, it is really like a family town kind of here. Um, and that might just be because I grew up in the South side. So like I went to Bowie high school and our roots go deep, like intergenerational. Like I think this is a third generation where like all of us know each other through and through, right? So like, I know that if I go somewhere and yeah, maybe, maybe I'm like, a little bit annoyed at my cousin, but if I see somebody doing something to one of her kids, I'm a, I'm gonna be like, hey, hey, look at what they're doing. Like, just wanted you to know, you know. So yeah, snitches get stitches. Nobody's snitching here, but I do feel like like because of that intergenerational protection, um, where people still know who people are, is why I chose to come back here. Number one, how I feel like I'm really safe here, um, in terms of like the the social aspect of things and it's nice weather and it costs a lot less and I can go to Mexico and get really cheap like dental care you can go to South America and get like stem cells for almost nothing and so the um, research shows that like the it's the baby boomers that are starting to retire and I have these houses that could really use a facelift and I want someone to want to move there and pay for all of the um, upgrades um, because because I don't I don't want to spend my money on that. I really don't. I just, I, I rather just pay off the houses um, because they do pay for themselves. So if anybody tries to see me, like, what, where, where are you going to get money from? Because, like, every, I control everything but own nothing. Um, but um, I think I can find, like, two or three, like, baby boomers that are willing to work with me, to bid and barter with me. So they get to put their parents in that house, and I am making sure that I am targeting, like, the pet-friendly crowd I think it's like beautiful when an older person gets to move with their dog or their cat or reptile or whatever they want um into a safe space where they have 
the money and the care necessary to get to keep their best friends with them. Um, so I am going to see if I can, I'm going to, I'm targeting like a very specific niche of people, which is like the children of baby boomers that are a little bit more tech savvy, but I'll take a baby boomer that needs a little bit of handholding any day. Um, that's why I'm also going to use Facebook. So if they want to move to my rentals, ideally they will also be okay to pay with upgrades to turn it into an assisted living facility. So I'll create jobs for a few people here in El Paso. They will pay for it to be um, up to code. Like I'm not going to get involved in that. I tried already and I, I'm, I'm a software developer and I'm a specialist in, art, in artificial intelligence. I went to the Small Business Association and I'm a veteran. So you would think that they would make it easy for me because I even said like, well, why can't I use my loan to find someone who specializes in this instead of you expecting me to go out and get credentials in medicine that are completely not what I do. And they were like, no, because your name's going to be tied to it. Like you need to be the one with the main credentials. And I was like, I, I don't think I care enough about appeasing a bank to do that. Plus the amount of money I would have to come up with is ridiculous before I would start to see any profits. So what I'm saying is like, I'm not trying to outdo um, Airbnb. Um, what I'm trying to do is bid and barter with people that have more money than me right now um, and that have less land than me right now and that want a stable, reliable, promised place for their parents. I'm very flexible on the, on the contract terms or themselves where they know that their pets are going to be welcome and they can decide if they want just them or if they want to create a cluster of people or if they want to like round up people themselves and they're going to be the ones or we're going to find out a way to write a contract where whomever it is that is the right person to take on finding contractors to get it done, who's going to be like overseeing those projects. I'm excellent at like overseeing contractors, but I'm busy building artificial intelligence shit. Like I don't want to drop what I'm doing to go tell a bunch of people with hammers like, hey, you're not you're you're, you're not focused on what you're supposed to do today well enough, like and, and go yell at people. I hate managing people. That's why I got into software because I, I don't like telling people what to do and how to do it. Um, like. That's why I like building bots, because you tell them one time, and if they suck, it's my fault, you know? Like, they, it's not the bots, it's me. But with people, it's, like, too much, like, back and forth for, for me to feel happy. So I don't want to be the one that does that. There's people that are, like, masters at that. <laughs> and I'm sure we can find some way, somehow, and I am a big, like, believer in energy than Abraham Hicks and, like, Buddhism and even Christianity. Like, I do think that I will bump into the right people in the right way so that it, it can happen that more elderly people get to stay with their dogs and so that I can feel okay about my assets. Um, I've been homeless before <laughs> and I do have like a court appointed fiduciary that looks over some of my stuff um, th thanks to the VA like being so supportive of me like transitioning and I wasn't even a sailor for that long like I sucked at it but um, yeah so, so this, this is why I'm doing this. Um, that's very long-winded, but again, I'm not making this video for you. I'm making it for me. So what I'm going to do at some point is when I'm done f building this API, um, which this is part of the journey, like documentation and being able to explain your ideas is part of building an API in my, in my thought system. Um, like I shouldn't build something and then expect someone to come in and read my code and understand all this shit that I'm saying right now, just because they knew they know how to use code. Like, no, that's not acceptable. Um, when you're excuse me, when you're building something, like you have to be able to not just write the code, but state your intention behind the code. And that is the full intention. So I'm going to take this, hopefully it's recording my voice. Um, it looks like it is because the microphone thing is on. Um, and I'm going to dump it into an AI later and then ask it to come up with like a really catchy, like very clear, concise presentation, um, probably using an avatar um, of what it is I'm trying to do. But now that I've explained it all, like at least if somebody wants more explanation, I'm not gonna sit through it with them and like let them tax my brain by asking me a bunch of shit. I'll be like, interact with my LLM. <laughs> Here's all the context. If there's something you can't get the answer for, ask me that very specific question and I will input it into the LLM. But otherwise I'm not built for like hand holding people through my thoughts because 
if we were all built the same, it would be like me making be, me making Michael Jordan feel bad for not like spending his whole week helping me learn how to dunk. Like I'm five five, I'm forty five years old. I'm not gonna probably dunk, and even if I could, it probably wouldn't be Michael Jordan that's the right person to show me. It'd probably be like someone who built like hydraulic prosthetics that can help me jump higher. You know what I'm saying? So like when people try to put me in the position of like, you have to explain it to me, it's not fair to me. And I don't, I don't need to because I'm building shit for myself. So when I get hired for contracts, I've started to draw that line and say like, it's not up to me to explain to somebody that has as much access to as much info as me to level up. Um, that's not part of my job. <laughs> like go to school, fool. You know, if you want to level up, if you want to understand how uh, how it is that I'm able to like find so much data stuff um, step by step. Well, you know, you're gonna have to do some of the work yourself or figure out how to figure out your own gaps, which is I think where I excel is like I know what I don't know, like pretty quickly, and I keep discovering what I don't know, and then I work off of that. And right now I don't know how to build APIs, but I'm learning C. So instead of like me spending hours and days and paying people and all this shit like to build my API, I'm just gonna dump it into LinkedIn. So here's like the app um, so that it knows exactly what I can do. And I think that I might just be able to click on that button, but I don't know. So I'm just gonna do this and then I'm gonna copy this again and put it into my notes and see like, yes, I deviate and go into rabbit holes, but now I've saved myself tons of work or trying to come up with like, how am I going to present this? And how do I explain what's going on in my head? Like I don't do stuff in like a, in a typical way, I think, which is why I'm advancing like super quick. And I'm also like a, what do, what do they call me? A chat gpt -er? <laughs> So like, can I build APIs? Yeah, I can motherfucker. Look, I just did it. I'm doing it, <laughs> right? So does that mean that I know how to explain to you what, what's like a specific API word? Mm, I don't know. But look, oh my God, it already built it for me. Huh? So I don't have to like be like, oh my God, what do I do, what do I do? See, so I would have, I could have spent hours and hours reading all the documentation, by what, but what, why the fuck would I? So I have, I already have a Flask app, right? Um, here's my front end HTML. And then I am going to try all of this stuff and then I'm just gonna keep feeding it into my, um, back into my code, which I have over here with code cursor. Where is it? Code cursor. I might have closed it. Here it is. Code cursor. Right? Look, see? Here's my chat GPT stuff. Here's my bid form that I tried to show you guys earlier. Like, and then if I want to use code cursor, which I should update. See? Like I just enter a new question and then it tells me what to do. This is how I'm getting through it really fast. So if you try to interview me and ask me to explain shit to you, I don't know how to answer your questions because I don't know how to help you level up if you haven't tried to level up and honestly i scored really high on like i'm not going to say iq tests because those are really biased um but like on cognitive ability tests i scored like off the charts um right and then my own life i feel is like proof enough of that like don't expect me to like be your michael jordan and teach you how to make a layup if you're only four foot five not my fault like level up or trust or find someone that appeases your ego sufficiently right because i'm not doing this for my ego anymore like i can build shit and i already have like multiple streams of income and i'm building more of them so it's going to be a win-win if you hire me i'm going to get to make more money in a controlled steady predictable way um and you will get your product but in all the stuff in between not my problem. <laughs> and if I have to work with a team, that's fine. I've worked with plenty of teams. Like I'm okay with that. But also don't send me to report to a boss that doesn't know shit and then pit that boss and me against each other because their ego is driving them or they're not secure enough in their abilities or they're your buddy and like you're expecting me to be your social buffer. Fuck you. I'm not doing that for anybody. <laughs> I don't even I didn't even do that for someone I was dating who kept like me trying to make me be like the middleman. Fuck that. Like I have tech skills. I have FU tech skills, right? So I have fuss skills. Fuss skills. That's my new word. So anyway, I'm not trying to be bitter. I'm just saying like I got shit to do. Like <laughs> like some of this stuff, like you're either gonna have to trust or you're gonna have to find someone else or whatever. Like I am not short of things to do. And that's the end of this video. Um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to help as many people as I can while I help myself, right? So 
Uh, it's like Cody Sanchez's example where, and I do look up to that woman like so much. Um, and I'm not saying I would, I'm, I'm not saying I'm trying to be her carbon co copy because I also really appreciate Tai Lopez a lot. Um, but those are my two role models. That's it. It's like how to build wealth and how to do stuff. That's who I have to look for. Like rich dad, poor dad got me to where I started to buy real estate. Um, and then people along the way, like Lieutenant Richard Shu, like he's the one that even introduced me to all that. Um, so there's, I and my mentor for my thesis, like I've had people all along the way, like help me, right? But I'm just saying like Cody Sanchez shows like that whole like napkin theory where you're not, you're not leaving people behind. Like as you're doing more, you're like more people are like the corners of the napkin and you're bringing them with you if they want to. Um, and, and then um, Ty Sanchez, I think he, he did the best he could with what he was facing. I feel for that guy because I feel the same way. Like I don't have like literally like an army of Navy SEALs on my side because I've never ran into them. Um, but I have like others, you know, like I have my people too. And my, I have my dogs and my dogs and I, I don't judge either. But those are my two, those are the two people I have to look up to. Ty Lopez and Cody Sanchez. And would I pick them if there were others? I probably still would because <laughs> I've gained like so much insight from them just watching their videos. Am I going to pay for their trainings? Fuck no. Like I don't need to. Um, <laughs> um, but I am going to continue to learn from them and just like adopt their mindsets and like stay strong and build this for me. And um, let's see what let's see what happens. <laughs> even so, let me just put it this way. Even if this doesn't take off, it's not like I'm lacking renters. Right? So like, I'm not putting all of my eggs in a basket. I'm not living on a fucking couch. You know, like I'm not doing stuff that other people want me to do. I'm doing what I want to do, how I want to do it because it works for me and my dogs and my dogs. The end.